Hello, yes, Nigel Farage must be delusional if he trusts the Tories, that's right. You see, Mr Farage, if you trust the Tories to deliver Brexit, then you are indeed delusional. But I don't believe, I don't believe you do, I don't believe you are delusional. I think you, 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 you're on the ball, you've took your eye off the ball, and I'll get to that in a minute, but you know what's happening, you know what's going on. You see... No matter how many resign, they will be replaced. And those that don't resign will buckle under like Michael Gove. Yes, men. Where they'll put themselves and career first. And even those that send letters in, in the hope of triggering a vote of no confidence in Theresa May. It's not going to get anywhere. It's not going to happen. She's not getting deposed or replaced. She's there for the duration. And that's the takers. There again, we haven't left. But should I say, to keep us in the European Union. She had no intentions of ever taking us out from day one. I did say this in my videos many times, Mr Farage, but you believed that democracy would have to prevail and Theresa May would have to fulfil her pledge. Well, let me take you back to 1979. Do you remember Margaret Thatcher's pledge where she said we were being swamped and she was going to stop immigration. Now, she said those words because it was to take the wind out the sail of the National Front in 1979 because there was a real chance of a breakthrough. So, the powers that be, um, Alfred Sherman, a former communist, uh, uh, wrote that little, uh, gave her them uh, words to say, wrote that little speech for her, right? A former communist, he was now like, an, an, he was an economist or something in the Tory party. But anyway, uh, Alfred Sherman, he had a, communist but anyway uh so she said th those words to take the wind out the sails of the national front sadly the people fell for it the national front didn't get the breakthrough it was expecting uh, and the tories were elected in 19 may 1979 and then what did uh, margaret thatcher do once she was elected continue to swamp britain with third world immigrants she broke her election pledge so treachery and betrayal is nothing new mr farage Let's go a little bit further, about 1980 is it? Book on me left there, the late great Ian Smith. Margaret Thatcher, Lord Callington and many others, they sold Rhodesia down the river, they stabbed the Rhodesian people in the back and handed their lovely prosperous country over to a Marxist dictator, Mugabe. Now the book next to it, a handful of hard men, the author says there that the Queen was pivotal in putting Mugabe in power. Can you believe that? It's just unbelievable. Oh, Queen, you know. Anyway, so treachery and betrayal's nothing new, Mr. Farage, and given you were once a Tory, you should know this more than anyone. But anyway, uh, and let's go a little bit further. 1984, when the IRA planted a bomb in the Bryan Hotel, Tory conference, uh, and, and nearly wiped out Margaret Thatcher in her cabinet. What does Margaret Thatcher do a year later? Was it some renewed war against the IRA? A real one with no holds barred? No. In 1985, she signs the Anglo-Irish Agreement, giving Dublin say in the affairs of Northern Ireland. So treachery and betrayal, Mr Farage, is nothing new to the Tories. Yet, if you believe you can put faith in the present ones, when not Rhys Mogg or whoever, then you're delusional. But I don't believe you are delusional. But sadly, you took your eye off the ball. You've left UKIP too prematurely and the spies now, the government agents are in control and they're not going to let you back in, right? Of course they're, they're not. You see, like I've said before, there's a backlash now coming over the horizon, but where's it going? It's not going to Theresa May, is it? Well, of course not. It's not going to Corbyn, right? He's another phony. I mean, he used to be against the EU. And now he's all for it. But anyway, uh, it's not going to Corbyn. So where's it going to go? UKIP, well, trust me, by the time it gets to UKIP, UKIP would have been destroyed by the government agents who have been sent in there to do just that. Now, where are you at the helm, Mr Farage? Wow, they'd have a problem on their hands, a big problem. Anyway, anyway, there's nothing we can do about that now. You've, you've left UKIP and I don't believe you're going to get control of it again. I hope you do, I may be wrong. All the same, what now do you plan to do? Because she's going to sell us out. Well, she's already done it, right? There's, she's not getting deposed or a coup. or It's not happening. There'll be resignations. They'll be replaced. 
and the Michael goes in this way, they'll just buckle under, put themselves in the career first, right? So nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change. It'll stay on schedule to betray us and keep us in the European Union. So what are you now going to do, Mr Farage? That's the question, isn't it? Okay, thank you. The main features of immigration control, which had so poisoned race relations, seemed to be disappearing. But there was soon a new twist to the politics of immigration. I now propose to take a turn to the right, which is very appropriate. <laughs> Up to this time, both Labour and the Conservatives had resisted the temptation to play the race card to win votes. But in the run-up to the 1979 election, the new Conservative leader had no such qualms. World in Action asks Conservative leader Margaret Thatcher about immigration, unemployment, pay policy and about her future relations with Edward Heath and Enoch Powell. People are really rather afraid that this country might be rather swamped by people with a different culture. And you know, the British character has done so much for democracy, for law and done so much throughout the world that if there's any fear that it might be swamped, people are going to react and be rather hostile to those coming in. So if you want good race relations, you've got to allay people's fears on numbers. That's one thing that's driving some people to the National Front. They don't agree with the objectives of the National Front, but they say that at least they're talking about some of the problems. Now, we the big political parties, if we don't want people to go to extremes, and I don't, we ourselves must talk about this problem, and we must show that we're prepared to deal with it. Mrs. Thatcher's comments immediately polarized opinion. I think Mrs. Thatcher's remarks are very much racist. I think she's perfectly right. And I do. She is talking racialist language and she is making the National Front more respectable in the eyes of the British people. I normally disagree with everything that Mrs. Thatcher says, but uh, I think this time for change it does make a bit of sense. The Shadow Home Secretary appeared to be firmly behind her. Don't you think perhaps that the use of the word swamped was a little emotive? I, the fears are there. And she, and she was saying what those fears were, and she's right, they are there. Willie Whitelaw was in the Shadow Home Secretary, he, he'd been building bridges to the immigrant community and so forth, and that, and uh, so r r blew up those bridges and infuriated him. And he, he certainly at that time, for a few days, very strongly contemplated resigning, which would of course have been a very grave step to take, because not only was he Shadow Home Secretary, he was Deputy Leader of the Party. In some quarters, Mrs. Thatcher's remarks were even less well received. I remember going to see the Indian Prime Minister, I think it was in number 10 Downing Street, and I followed Mrs. Thatcher as, as all was, uh, and I was sitting waiting, and she came out of the room and stumped past me without even saying good morning, disappeared out the door. And I